Hi, I'm Becca Kennedy, and I'm talking about neural or pain reprocessing therapy. In this presentation, I'll describe the details of what this is, and I'll have a separate recording to give an example of a somatic tracking exercise. This technique is called pain reprocessing therapy, but I refer to it as neural reprocessing therapy as it's used for more than just pain. It's a process to turn off the neural circuit, creating the symptom like a sort of exposure therapy. It's a process of learning to lean into the discomfort rather than away from it. We need to teach the brain that we're not in true danger. If we lean away from the symptom with fear or we're trying to get rid of it, that reinforces the message to the unconscious brain that there truly is something damaged or something to fear. So this technique can be used for any neuroplastic symptom, meaning that it is not generated by damage in the body, but rather generated by a faulty danger signal from the brain. Let's briefly review neuroplastic symptoms. All symptoms are real. The question is, what is the generator of the symptom? Is it damage in the body or just fear in the brain? When we have a broken leg, our unconscious brain interprets that signal of damage and then needs to communicate the danger to our conscious brain to stay off of it so it can heal. And sometimes our brain keeps sending the signal even though our body has healed and we don't need it anymore. Like a kitchen smoke detector, it's critical when there's a fire, but if it's too sensitive and goes off from just a burned piece of toast, it's not needed or helpful. There's no true danger. This is what neuroplastic symptoms are, when the brain is sending a warning signal, but there's no damage in the body. The severity of the symptoms has nothing to do with whether it's generated by damage in the body or merely the fear in the brain. This comes up a lot with my patients. Neuroplastic symptoms are often far more severe than those caused by physical damage in the body. Phantom limb pain, for example, can be far worse than recovering from the wounds of the actual amputation surgery. So the intensity of symptoms cannot be used to determine if they are generated by damage in the body or not. It's important to understand fully that your symptoms are neuroplastic in order to do neural reprocessing therapy. We're teaching the unconscious brain there's no danger in the body by showing it. So we need to believe it fully with our rational brain first. What does your conscious brain believe at this point? Do you have any fears still around the symptoms or are you not entirely convinced that they're neuroplastic? If so, I recommend reinforcing safety with Dr. Schubiner's FIT criteria, which helps determine if the symptoms are neuroplastic. Part of what's so hard about this work is that there's no test to confirm your symptoms are neuroplastic. We have to assess it through the pattern of the symptoms. I'm not gonna go through all the details of the FIT criteria, but if you still have questions about your own symptoms being neuroplastic, I encourage you to pause the video and go through the criteria yourself. The functional part of the FIT criteria is that the symptoms are not consistent with known structural conditions. The inconsistent part of the FIT criteria is that the symptoms change in ways structural damage would not. And the triggered part of the FIT criteria is that the symptoms are brought on by stimuli that would not actually cause the symptoms physically. It's a conditioned learned response like the sound of the bell and Pavlov's dog salivating. I recommend creating an evidence list from the FIT criteria that supports the diagnosis of neuroplastic symptoms. Review it regularly, especially when symptoms worsen and doubt creeps in. It's important to let go of body-based diagnoses. You may still want to meet a physician for reassurance if you still need. Physician aware of this model can be most helpful, but if that's not accessible, I recommend saying to your physician, I think these symptoms may be due to stress, but I wanna make sure I'm not missing anything. The evaluation and testing to rule out structural damage is often fairly straightforward. It's also important not to go too far down the rabbit hole of testing and pursuing findings that are not actually worrisome or causing symptoms. Once you're assured the symptoms are neuroplastic, you can start the neural reprocessing therapy. Your body is not broken. Your unconscious brain just believes that it is. Your unconscious brain is also not broken. This is actually the normal response from the protective nervous system because of the stressors, hurts, and harms we've been through in our lives. Our brains evolved to respond to an acute injury, 
So this method is not intuitive. Pain in the body is hardwired to mean damage in the body. For an acute injury like a sprained ankle, the treatment is to stay off of it. Don't use it so it can heal. First, we wait for the pain to go away. Then we can return to using it. However, with chronic pain that we've determined as neuroplastic, the problem is in the signaling in the brain, not damage in the body. So the treatment is opposite and counterintuitive to that of an acute injury. For treatment for neuroplastic symptoms, you first use it despite having the symptoms, then the pain or other symptoms will go away. Let, let's explore more specifics of how this is done. The goal is not to immediately get out of pain, but to start changing your response to and relationship with pain or other symptoms. You're not trying to convince yourself that the symptoms aren't real. Rather, the signal is not needed. Your body is not actually damaged. You are not in true physical danger. It's the process that eventually leads to shutting off the signal. The exercise itself is not to turn the symptoms off in that moment. For example, if you break your arm and you're doing physical therapy to regain the strength afterwards, you don't look down at your arm on the first day and wonder, am I strong yet? Is my arm recovered? No, it takes time. You don't even think about when, when it will get there. You just do the exercises every day or so to some, at some point eventually get there. In the same way, neural reprocessing therapy is about the process. The outcome takes time. If you focus on getting rid of the symptoms and get scared that they're still present, that reinforces the fear around them. You want to learn to be present with the symptoms without fear. This is just your brain's communication system, your unconscious brain communicating with your conscious brain. You lean into the sensations. Your brain is scared and trying to protect you like a small child. Instead of pushing away the sensations, welcome them. Listen to what they are saying. Assign different, less scary words. Instead of stabbing, burning pain, imagine warm rays of sun. Whatever adjectives and images you can use to decrease the fear. Every time you experience your symptoms without fear, you have changed a few of the neurons in the neural circuit that creates the symptom. Imagine the neural circuit like, like the light bright game from the 80s. The exercise is like replacing one or two light bulbs at a time. It takes time to switch them all out and notice a difference to the overall picture. When to do this is when the symptoms are present and turned on, but not too much. Like with fear of heights, if you're sitting in my office and I say to you, you really don't need to be afraid at the top of the Empire State Building, you're really not in any danger. It will do nothing because I'm talking to the conscious brain, but it's the unconscious brain that controls the fear. But if you start with the fear too high, it will be too overwhelming and just reinforce the fear signal. You don't wanna start bungee jumping when you're afraid of height. Wherever you start needs to be tailored for yourself. It's about the fear and not the activity or what you think you should be able to do. Maybe just standing on the edge of this bridge is where to start, or maybe even that's too much. Wherever the symptoms are turned on for you, but not too overwhelming is where to start. And it may change from day to day. This is about learning to listen to your body. The exercise involves turning on the symptom mildly and then coupling it with safe signals. Smile, you breathe out, use imagery, humor, music, smell an I scent, say an affirming statement, like, I'm safe, I'm not in danger, my body is healthy, and I'll be okay. Experience the symptoms with a sense of ease and relaxation. One way to do this is through somatic tracking. This is a conscious awareness of the sensations in your body without trying to get rid of them. Merely noticing them and paying attention to the details while experiencing safe signals at the same time. For example, if we're in a haunted house and our best friend taps us on the shoulder, we'll overreact because we interpret the signal through fear. Whereas if we're having a nice picnic and our friend taps us on the shoulder in the exact same way, 
we don't overreact because we're not viewing it through a lens of fear. The, mindful, the mindfulness component is consciously paying attention to the sensations without trying to get rid of them. Recognizing these are normal sensations getting misinterpreted, just like the tap on the shoulder in the haunted house. Understanding component is knowing that your body is not damaged, reframing the sensation as a faulty danger signal rather than damage in your body. And then focus your attention on safe signals like your breath, other areas of your body that feel good, imagery, humor, nice scent, joy. As you toggle your attention between the symptoms and the signals of safety, you are changing the neural circuit a bit or replacing a few of those light bright bulbs. The somatic tracking is more of a meditative mindful experience or exercise. Another way to re rewire the circuit involves more active exposure. Often people progressively avoid activities that are associated with the pain or other symptoms. This is the natural thing to do, but it reinforces the fear avoidance feedback loop. People stop gardening, walking, sitting, standing, typing, playing music or sports. They commonly stop eating foods that become associated with symptoms as a conditioned response, or perhaps because of food elimination diets. The foods are often not the true source of the symptoms, just like the physical activities are not the true source of the symptoms, but rather become conditioned responses. It's important to gently return to these activities and stimuli. Graded exposure is engaging in these activities and challenging fearful thoughts when symptoms crop up with signals like, I'm safe, I'm okay, I can handle this. Moving your body and doing activities despite having symptoms changes your brain's response, like going for a walk, doing stretching exercises, or a bike ride. Whatever is the starting point with your current limitations, sometimes that means just walking around your living room, maybe walking around your yard, just around the block. Whatever you can do to lean into the discomfort without too much fear. It can be helpful to find a small movement that just barely turns on the symptoms and then gently turn them back off with ease. Do this over and over to desensitize the brain and create new neural circuits. As an example, I've had the ACL, my ACL replaced in my knee twice. So my brain likes sending the path, the pain signal to that knee to get my attention. For a while, just tightening the muscle in my thigh without even moving the joint would cause pain. So to desensitize my brain, I would tighten that muscle over and over throughout the day. I found that I automatically held my breath when I did this. So I would need to consciously breathe out and relax down as I tighten my muscle to send it safe signals. It was hard initially not to focus on still having the pain as I did this exercise. I found myself saying, oh no, it's still there. It hasn't gone away. This isn't working. When will it go away? It was helpful to think instead, I don't know when it will go away. It could be in a month or a week or an hour. I don't know. But what I do know is it will go away sometime out in the future. It's present right now. It's not dangerous. And by experiencing it and being present with it, it will help it to go away eventually. A small movement can be done with whatever symptom you have. Standing up and sitting down on the couch, for example, for dizziness with standing can be helpful. What should you expect from this process? First of all, the symptoms can increase. This is normal. The unconscious brain wants to convince you you're in danger. If you're not buying in, it will try harder. Like a parent walking toward the closet to show their child there are no monsters, the fear and therefore the symptom can initially go up. But continue to toe the line. As you continue to not buy into the fear, like the scared child, the brain will finally learn it does not need to be afraid. If the pain worsens by merely focusing on it and without any additional injuries, that is just more evidence that the source is neuroplastic. The symptoms can improve for a while, but then return. And that's okay too. It can be frustrating, no doubt, but you know since they improved at least for a short time, you're on the right path. It will be up and down, but you'll get there. Expect that. 
Another thing that can happen is that one symptom can decrease or resolve, but then another one comes up. Remember, the brain's motive is to scare you. If you're no longer very scared by one area, your brain may choose another. I got to the point that the pain in my knee didn't scare me anymore, so it went away. I started noticing when I was nervous or concerned about something, I'd get a pain in my neck over my jugular. I thought it was funny that my brain chose to go for the jugular. So I could quickly meet the symptom with a smile and humor and laugh at it and say to it, ha ha, nice try. And because of that, the pain quickly dissipated and didn't stick around. It's important not to buy into the new symptoms. Certainly get them checked out by your doctor if you need to, but be careful not to go too far down the rabbit hole of testing. If you're able to resolve some symptoms, but keep getting new ones, it can help to dive deeper into the messages your brain is sending. What is the source of fear you haven't addressed? Are there emotions that need processing? Do you need better boundaries or need to say no? Is your life out of balance? These are things that we'll explore uh, further in later classes. And I recognize this whole process can feel like a trust ball. Much of this is not intuitive and requires having some faith that the process will work. But you can start slowly. You don't have to take a huge leap initially. There's nothing dangerous about this. It's about slowly gathering evidence for your brain that you're not damaged. Looking at success stories can be helpful for this part. Almost everybody thinks this will not work for them at the beginning. When you do neural reprocessing therapy, it depends on the severity of your symptoms. When the symptoms are high or intense, do whatever you normally do to, to get through them. Do not do neural reprocessing therapy. For instance, you wouldn't do exposure therapy for fear of heights by bungee jumping. So apply heat or ice or sit down and rest, watch a funny movie, call a friend, whatever you would normally do. Remember, the neural reprocessing therapy exercise is about being present with the symptoms without fear, not trying to make them go away at that moment. When the symptoms are light or moderate, that's the opportunity to do neural reprocessing therapy. You can do the somatic tracking exercise or movement with other exposures. In summary, neural reprocessing therapy is a process to teach your brain your body is not broken. The exercise is outcome independent. It doesn't matter if the symptoms stay exactly the same, if they get stronger, or if they go away entirely. It's merely learning to be present with the symptoms without fear. And it takes time. You can do the somatic tracking multiple times throughout the day, as long as it's with carefree ease, which brings a feeling of safety. If done with serious intensity, it can increase the fear. It involves leaning into triggers rather than away from them to teach your brain that these are learned associations and not actually dangerous. They're not doing any harm to your body. When we avoid stimuli such as physical activities, certain positions, foods, smells, light, etc., that reinforces to our brain that our body is damaged. By experiencing these things little by little with strength and safety, it sends messages to our brain that we're not actually broken, that will then eventually turn off the danger signal for symptoms in the future. The mindfulness component is to be present and aware in the moment with interest and acceptance rather than judgment and avoidance. The understanding is that you're not broken. Instead of focusing on your body and symptoms, turn and focus on joy and meaning in your life. You need to start within your current limitations, but leaning into that discomfort and fear is part of what will get you better. Couple the sensations with safe signals to teach your brain that you're all right. You can do this. Breathing out calms your nervous system. We always have our breath and can rely on it anytime. Other things, meditation, music, friends, nature, and most importantly, engaging in joyful activities.